To introduce our speaker, we have a member of our uh, local business chapter, Mr. Charles Casey. And while he's doing that, if you would check your cell phones and make sure they're on silence, we'd, we would appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Casey. Well, I'm pleased to introduce our speaker this morning. We met for the first time on the elevator, but I know that he is not a stranger to many of you as he's been in this area uh, two or three times already. Uh, he is founder and president of the American Policy Center, which focuses on the preservation of the rights of United States citizens under our Constitution. For over 30 years, he has been a businessman, a grassroots activist, a writer, and publisher. And among the things that he has championed are, are private property rights and privacy rights. And these are among the things that qualify him to speak to us about Agenda 21 and sustainable development. Agenda 21 and sustainable, sustainable development are already driving decisions at the community uh, level. And those of us that live in Dallas and Plano and Richardson and, and several of the, of the DFW areas are already being affected by that. Unfortunately, our community leaders are not aware of it. They're ignorant of, of what is really going on. Tom DeWeese is here as our guest today to inform us uh, about Radical Agenda 21 uh, and what we can do as informed citizens to protect ourselves from one of the greatest threats of our generation. I encourage you to take notes because you'll need those notes if you try to address uh, any of your local uh, uh, politicians. Please help me welcome Tom Weeks. Thank you. I um, want to warn you about taking those notes. I talk fast and I apologize, but there's so much information to get out that it's uh, difficult to, uh, to take it slow. Um, meetings like this are taking place across the country, hundreds of them. People are beginning to understand uh, about Agenda 21. Uh, you may have heard of it, you may not have heard of it, you may know about it, you may not know about it. What I'm going to do today in the next hour is I'm going to go through it uh, very fast, but as thoroughly as I possibly can, so that you can uh, get the gist of it and understand it and, and walk out of this room and join the revolution to stop Agenda 21. But let me, let me just start by saying this. Property, liberty, and the rule of law. These are the founding principles of the United States of America. And we hear these words, yet many Americans fail to understand their meaning or how they affect our everyday lives. Our founding fathers warned us that eternal vigilance was necessary in order to protect our liberties. They have been ignored, and life in America has begun to change. You all know that something is very wrong in America. Every day, government at every level gets more out of control, more intrusive in our personal lives, more of a threat to our private property, all in total and flagrant disregard of the expressed will of the people. The fact is, Americans have grown to fear our own government. Life is getting harder. There is less optimism about the future. You know, the once prominent phrase, American dream, seems to have been dropped from our vocabulary. The reason? America is going through what Al Gore called a wrenching transformation of our society. Well, what kind of transformation? What has changed? Where does this transformation originate? How does it directly affect your everyday life? Well, the old structure of what was once the United States of America is being replaced with a new political and economic order that is drastically changing the very underpinnings of our nation. It is being done quietly, behind the scenes, without debates, without votes, and with no formal uh, announcement. Yet this new ruling authority has become the official policy of the federal government, every state government, and nearly every city, town, and burg in the country. 
The ruling authority is called sustainable development. And its blueprint for transforming human existence is fully outlined in a UN document called Agenda 21. I've had over 20 years of experience studying every aspect of sustainable development in Agenda 21, and I've learned that it is an absolute threat to everything free Americans hold dear. Here's what I know. Over the past 20 years, a strange new language began to overtake our government. Today, a typical city council meeting discusses comprehensive development, density, historic preservation, and partnerships between the city and private, or private companies. Civic leaders organize community meetings run by facilitators as they outline a vision for the town that is ultimately enforced by something called consensus. Wetlands, conservation easements, watersheds, viewsheds, rails to trails, biosphere reserves, greenways, carbon footprints, partnerships, preservation, stakeholders, land use, environmental protection, development, diversity, visioning, open space, heritage areas, comprehensive planning, critical thinking, and even community service have all become part of this new language. <clears throat> what are they really talking about? Where was such language first developed? Well, the term sustainable development was born on the pages of a United Nations document called Our Common Future. This was the official report of the 1987 UN World Commission on Environment and Development. As a result of this report, for the first time, the use of environmental protection and human development were tied to the age-old socialist goals of international redistribution of wealth. And that is the key to understanding the true purpose of sustainable development and all of its policies, control of all facets of the economy. And just to make it very interesting, here is how the UN described Agenda 21 in one of its own publications in 1993. It said, quote, Agenda 21 proposes an array of actions which are intended to be implemented by every person on Earth. It calls for specific changes in the activities of all people. Effective execution of Agenda 21 will require, will require a profound reorientation of all humans unlike anything the world has ever experienced." End quote. Have you ever heard a more powerful manifesto issued for the purpose of government? And yet, when you and I point this out and protest against it, we are attacked as fringe radicals. Never heard of it, doesn't exist, you're all crazy. Well, here is the exact course that brought Agenda 21 to America and into your local community. Before I'm done today, I'll go through this three times because it is absolutely necessary for you to understand this process as they continue to deny that local planning boards have nothing to do with Agenda 21. At the top of the infrastructure, Pushing sustainable development is the United Nations Environmental Program, or the UNEP. But the UNEP doesn't operate on its own. Influencing it are thousands of non-governmental organizations, or NGOs. Remember that term, NGOs. These are private groups which seek to implement a special political agenda. And through the UN infrastructure, particularly through the UNEP, they have great power. NGOs aren't just groups that just pop up somewhere and say, oh, we're an NGO. They are sanctioned by the United Nations after they fill out an application that's about that thick, and they get approved to work in these international meetings and behind the scenes. And prior to the 1992 Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro, these sanctioned NGOs spent considerable time writing and creating the document that would be introduced to the world as Agenda 21. At the Earth Summit, 172 heads of state signed agreement to Agenda 21, including President George H.W. Bush. 
Agenda 21 is not a treaty that has to be ratified by the Senate. Rather, it's what's known as a soft law policy, a guideline that the nation agrees to implement through its own legislative process. And this is what our critics point to constantly. Agenda 21 is just an idea. There's no rule of law here. There are no blue helmeted soldiers over in City Hall. There's no enforcement. It's all a voluntary thing. But while opponents of Agenda 21 use that fact to dismiss our concerns, claiming it's just a voluntary suggestion, that is far from the truth. Step by step, their suggestions have become the force of government. President Bush, in signing the document, committed the U.S. to implement the policies of, the, of Agenda 21. Agenda 21 then gained huge momentum when in 1993, President Bill Clinton signed Executive Order 12852 to create the President's Council on Sustainable Development and he made it official U.S. policy. Take a look at who served on that council and you will see many of the same NGOs which helped write Agenda 21 at the UN level, now openly serving on the, on the President's Council of Sustainable Development. They include Jonathan Lash of the World Resources Institute, one of the three most powerful organizations influencing the UNEP on the President's Council. Also on the President's Council were John Sawhill of the Nature Conservancy, and Jay Hare of the National Wildlife Federation, and Michelle Peralt, the uh, International Vice President of the Sierra Club. All players in the creation of Agenda 21 now openly serving on the President's Council with the specific mission of implementing Agenda 21 into American policy. And there is an even more direct route between Agenda 21 and our federal government. Included at the UNEP table to develop policy, to discuss it and bring it home to implement it, along with all of those NGO groups who helped write it, are these players from our federal government. They include representatives from the Department of State, the Department of Interior, the Department of Agriculture, the Environmental Protection Agency, the National Park Service, the U.S. Forest Service, the Fish and Wildlife Service. These agencies send representatives to all UNEP meetings. Now, why do they do that if Agenda 21 is just a myth that has no effect on our government? The fact is, of course, it does. You might remember a great deal of discussion during the Clinton administration about the idea of a reinventing of government. Now, some people actually thought this meant that the government finally figured it out and they needed to adhere to the Constitution We reinvent how government was run. Well, Vice President Al Gore was put in charge of that reinvention, so that should have been our first clue. The reinvention, of course, was sustainable development. The purpose of the President's Council was to translate the guidelines of Agenda 21 into public policy to be administered by the federal government. And that step-by-step -step process translated into the ruling authority through which a UN plan, Agenda 21, has become unquestioned U.S. policy throughout the nation. Sustainable development is not a local idea or local policy, no matter how many times your local elected officials tell you that. The idea, the process, the agenda came from this process. So, what is sustainable development? 